how are you? Good, good. Um, I'm Remy Purnell, and we'll be defending slang today. If you were to ask any passerby on the street what their opinion on the sentence, Johnny got turned at the club with that ratchet girl, but her eyebrows were on fleek, they'd probably denounce it as millennial teen talk, right? But slang and criticism of slang is not new. In 1870, Oliver Wyndham Holmes claimed that slang was both the cause and the sign of mental atrophy. And even in the heyday of Latin, which is like the so-called linguistic golden age, right? Cicero claimed that you speak was making Latin go to hell, basically. Um, but if these predictions were true, that slang was deteriorating our language, then I should just be speaking to you at grunts at this point. But I'm not. So slang actually benefits our language because it's the language of everyday life. And I argue that slang actually benefits the way we communicate. And the first reason for that is that slang builds community. So essentially, slang is a way for us to build group dynamics and build interpersonal relationships. So let's take the word dude, right? So dude was once a way for us to criticize very fashion forward, look obsessed men. It was the way of saying hipster back in the 1800s. But today, dude is a way for us, for men, to express affection for one another. So if you say, hey dude, that's the way that Daniel Lambert says that we can show heterosexual straight chillness while still saying, hey man, you're my friend. <laughs> also, there's a secondary way. So slang helps build inner group community. So when, if you and your friends make a word for something, that's good. Because if you and your friends share an experience together, you want to make a word out of it, right? So in Seattle, we say, the mountain is out today. Because we all want to share the experience of Mount Rainier out in the world, right? And in the military, actually, in World War II, um, and in the military in general, uh, slang tends to be about complaints or really terrible military food. Uh, for example, one particular uh, slang is Dear John. And if you got a girlfriend that's breaking up with you via letter that she's leaving you for your neighbor, you got a Dear John. The secondary reason why slang um, helps us communicate is because it allows people to discuss the vulgar. So hedonism is a part of our everyday lives. And we all want to discuss sex, drugs, and rock and roll, but the explicit words to talk about those things are just too taboo for everyday lives. Um, so for example, although you might get turned at the club today, if you go to a 1920s speakeasy prohibition, you'd be zazzled at the speakeasy. Um, and also, if you were to get, go to the pub in 1616, you would be glugified. And if you were to buy weed on the streets of Seattle in 1930, you would be looking for muggles or for jives in the day. Also, if you're banging Elizabeth today, if you're banging the same girl in 1650, you'd be joining good billets or fadoodling with her. In 1500, you would be playing her the nug nug. So we're really squeamish people, and slang allows us to speak about the squeamish, because that's what's important. What happens behind closed doors with the lights off, that's what we like to talk about. And slang helps us circumvent this kind of nervous things, this kind of defense mechanism, I guess. Uh, the third reason why slang enhances communication is because slang promotes creativity. <laughs> um, <laughs> gotta finish my talk. Um, S.I. Hayakawa once called slang the poetry of life. So if you are to say uh, Johnny got turned to the club with that ratchet girl, it's really way more enthusiastic and vivacious than saying Johnny imbibed one standard alcoholic drink last night at the Unicorn. Because one doesn't want to sound like they're constantly bullshitting an academic essay with a bunch of academic jargon all the time because that would be boring. And if we were, were referencing the Purdue Owl Guide every time we wanted to make a sentence, it would be boring. And if you're really serious about communicating an idea, and communicating an idea effectively, it is far more important to be interesting and relevant than dogmatic, right? So although you may not agree with slang in every context, because like if you're in a talk with your boss, for example, or in a student parent teacher conference, it's probably not okay to say word every moment, right? But you have to respect its place in the language because it does help us communicate and it really does satisfy our deep needs for commodity, comfort, and creativity. If we hold on to a foolish nostalgia of what linguist claim is standard English, we really miss seeing the beauty of a language in change, in democratic, and in flux. Thank you.